everybody, it is April 27th, 2014, and it's time for the weekend video. Okay, on the weekends, I usually do a video about our recent PowerCast that we do every Thursday, and this weekend is no different. I want to talk about something that was said in uh, this past Thursday's PowerCast, and it, was regard it started out with a question from a former pastor who is uh, now a gospel revolutionary, and he thanks Mike for destroying his church with the gospel. <laughs> So, um, but anyway, he asked about the law and and, uh, and who gave it, where did it come from, and who was it for, and it came out in the PowerCast that the law of Moses was given to the Jews. Now, Paul spoke uh, a lot to the Gentiles, and he spoke often about the law, and Paul said even though the, the law was given to the Jews, the Gentiles themselves were a law unto themselves, because Paul talked a lot about the law and how it was fulfilled, and it was a... Um, it was over, it was fulfilled, and yet he was talking to Gentiles a lot who were not relating to the Jewish law, but they were relating to a law of performance, their own law of performance, which actually was quite similar to the law that was given to the Jews. And in the, his letter to the Colossians, <clears throat> he brings it all down to Jesus, and, um, and it's good news for them for uh, how they feel about their relationship with God, and, and more importantly, what you know, what God has done in His relationship with all of humanity, and that's what I want to get to today. Now, regarding the question about the law that was in the PowerCast, um, while Mike was answering it, he re he was reminded of a verse to the Colossians, and the verse that he read from was, "For it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell." Now, fullness is the operative word here. Paul spoke <clears throat> predominantly about fullness in the New Testament, and uh, he also was the predominant teacher of the word fulfillment. He used these words uh, together a lot, and in his gospel, in his preaching, primarily to the Gentiles, but also to the Jews, um, fulfillment and fullness was something that was very prominent in Paul's gospel that, was, that is conspicuously absent in all the other books by all the other writers in the New Testament. And this is something that Paul understood that the others just did not. Um, when it, regarding the word fulfillment, <clears throat> Mike in, in a previous PowerCast was talking about that that word fulfillment means that all uh, prophecy, all law, and all ceremony were fulfilled in the work of the cross. They were completed, they were fulfilled, they were ended. And this word fullness here used in Colossians verse 19, Mike was pointing out that the word fullness means container, and it's speaking about Jesus here, and that Jesus was a container, and in him, and the word fullness also means performance and period, as in a period of time or age. So in Christ it is saying here that it would please the Father that uh, Jesus was the container in which all performance and everything of the age of the law, <clears throat> including the prophecies and everything else, were fulfilled in him. And this is something that Paul is talking to the Jews about, to, or to the Gentiles about, excuse me. And Paul is talking to the Gentiles about how all is fulfilled. Why is this important? It's important because we need to get to the context of what Paul is talking about. And always remember, he's talking to Gentiles. Okay, let's get to the context of what Paul was talking about. Starting back a little further in verse 17 of Colossians, um, here Paul is talking about Jesus, and, and he says, And he, Jesus, is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile, reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, uh, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. He's talking to Gentiles who were never under the Jewish law, yet were a law unto themselves. And he's saying that 
they were at one time in their minds they were alienated from God because of their wicked works in their minds in their thinking because they were a law unto themselves which means they were performance oriented and they knew their performance was either not good enough for God or would cause God to reject them so they are now free having heard about this fullness coming to pass in Jesus Christ that they are now uh, unblameable and unreprovable in his sight according to verse 22. So here we have Paul talking about uh, this performance that both Jew and Gentile knew uh, or feared or dreaded in relationship to God and here God has done a great work where all of performance and all of ceremony and all of law and all of prophecy and the whole age of this performance period was fulfilled in Jesus Christ, come to fullness, and all were in him. Paul actually preached to other Gentiles he, and said that, don't you know, when he was first, they never heard the gospel before, and he first told them for the first time about the gospel, he said, don't you know that in him you live and move and have your being? He's speaking this to people who are hearing the gospel before for the first time. They were unbelievers, they didn't believe in Jesus, and yet he's including them in the redemptive work of Christ saying they are reconciled to him just like the Colossians are reconciled to him just like the Jews are reconciled to him he was saying that all Gentiles and all Jews were reconciled unto God whether they were a Christian or not whether they're a believer or not it does not matter performance is a non-issue now belief is a non-issue now and the law is a non-issue now and prophecy is a non-issue now they, there is nothing more to be done by them because they were all fulfilled in Jesus Christ through the blood sacrifice he's talking about in Colossians for all humanity. So, good news, folks. The good news is really full of it. This word fullness, Mike and I have been talking about it. We've been going into this word fullness. Number one, it's only mentioned 13 times in the New Testament. Once by John, the other time times, the other 12 times out of the 13 was by Paul. So... Uh, we might start, I might start a little series here on the fullness that Paul was talking about because it really is finished, folks. The fullness of this gospel is this gospel is really just full of it. And so we'll get into more about this fullness in later videos. And I hope you have a good day.